Hello everybody, this is Kirby Over Yonder, and we are now on Adventure Time Season 4, a very interesting season of Adventure Time that I'm excited to talk about. When a show gets to Season 4, it runs the risk of overstaying its welcome. You've already perfected and experimented with the core concept, so what's left to do? Well, typically, the show would start adding new elements to try and mix things up. Sometimes this is for the better, other times... Eh... But how about Adventure Time? How does Season 4 change things up, and does it do so in a way that works? Well, I think the biggest change in Season 4 is its tone. The show as a whole just feels a little less wacky than it was in its first three seasons. Of course, it's not like the wackiness is gone completely, this is still Adventure Time after all. It all just feels a little more grounded, there's less of that chaotic, anything could happen at any moment energy to it. I don't think this change is particularly bad, mind you. I actually quite like Season 4's more down-to-earth approach. It's just an aspect of the season I find to be notable. But speaking of the tone, I also feel like Season 4 is more apt to discuss mature themes than the first three seasons. We got themes such as toxic relationships and web weirdos, mental health and princess monster wife, nurture versus nature and Goliad. We've got a trans allegory in Princess Cookie as well as a suicide in the very same episode, loneliness and isolation in You Made Me, and mental illness in I Remember You. Earlier seasons definitely touched upon some of these themes, but Season 4 is definitely the first to really dive into them and dedicate full episodes to them. I appreciate that the season is able to go the extra mile in this regard, as tackling mature themes will become a staple of Adventure Time from this point on, even if not all of these are handled with the most amount of tact. In Season 3, we got the episode Thank You, our first episode to not feature Finn and Jake in a starring role or at least an alternate version of Finn and Jake. Well, Season 4 would continue in this trajectory to pull away from Finn and Jake just a little bit more. We've got Princess Monster Wife and I Remember You, both episodes taking place from Ice King's perspective. Our first BMO episode in the form of BMO Noir, Lady and Peebles being from the perspective of Princess Bubblegum and Lady Rainicorn, and Five Short Graybulls, which is an ensemble piece even if Finn and Jake's segment does bleed into most of the others. And even episodes that do star Finn and Jake are much more willing now to pull away from their perspective. Of course, this isn't to say that we've just left Finn and Jake entirely. They still star in a good majority of episodes. We're not quite at Season 6 territory yet. But I think it's cool that the show is putting a stronger emphasis on its extended cast. It definitely helps that these are all characters we're familiar with and already care about. Like, I'm not the biggest BMO Noir fan out there, but I'd much rather an episode like this star BMO than just random candy person number 273 or whatever. But if there's one thing that Season 4 loves most, it's character drama. And in no episode is this more evident than Burning Low. Seriously, this thing is basically just character drama, the episode. We've got Finn trying to get to Tier 2 with Flame Princess. We got Bubblegum not wanting Finn to get to Tier 2 with Flame Princess. Jake thinking PB is jealous. Finn thinking PB is just trying to build him up again. And don't even get me started on the marketing. Do not do Tier 15. Seriously, if there is an Adventure Time episode that feels the most like a soap opera, it's probably this one. But along with that, you also have Marceline's daddy issues and daddy's little monster. You have some Finn and Jake drama in In Your Footsteps. You have dramatic characters like Goliad and Princess Cookie. Magic Man being put on trial in Sons of Mars. There's Love and Grab and all of his issues in You Made Me. That big Finn and Jake fight in Who Would Win. And of course, there's Marceline and Ice King's past in I Remember You. I guess what I mean to say with all these examples is that Season 4 really pushes its characters to their limits. It just feels like there's a bit more tension in Season 4, even in relatively silly episodes like Card Wars. But along those same lines, Season 4 also loves its romance. Obviously, Finn and Flame Princess is the big one, getting three different episodes dedicated to them throughout the season, and we'll discuss them in greater detail in just a minute, but there are also tons of other examples. There's Ed and Barb in Web Weirdos. 
Tree Trunks and Mr. Pig in Dream of Love. Ice King and his wife in Princess Monster Wife. LSP developing a crush on Finn in Gotcha. And Ricardio trying to impress PB in Lady and Peebles. Look, I'm sure someone out there supports this ship, but whoever they are, I do not want to meet them. As I mentioned before, Season 4 is a very drama-heavy season, and obviously romantic drama is a big part of that. But the show's drama can only be as interesting as the characters themselves, so how are the characters in Season 4? As I previously mentioned, this is the season in which Finn starts dating Flame Princess, but to be honest, I have kind of mixed thoughts on this arc as a whole. On the one hand, I am glad that Finn got a love interest his own age. Finn's crush on Bubblegum definitely peaked in Season 3, and it would have been kind of annoying to see this dragged out for longer than it needed to be. But at the same time, I can't help but feel like this whole relationship between them is a little underdeveloped, at least in Season 4. Like, we go from the end of Hot to the Touch, where FP tells Finn that they can't date because they're too different, to Burning Low, where suddenly they're dating now? It sort of feels like we're missing an episode or two, you know? And because FP only has a major role in three episodes this season, we don't really get a good understanding of what these two see in each other. And hey, that's if we even count Ignition Point. But relationships aside, I think Season 4 also really enjoyed screwing with Finn's head. He gets his identity stolen in In Your Footsteps. He gets turned into a hug wolf, gets mind controlled by Goliad, is turned into a spirit in Beyond This Earthly Realm, is forced to grapple with the fact that his hero Billy was killed and possessed by the Lich, and let's not forget the entirety of Cane Worm. Seriously, somebody come get this kid some therapy. In comparison to previous seasons, I feel like Jake takes on a bit more of a straight man role in Season 4. He'll tell Finn not to follow Flame Princess and Hot to the Touch. He'll point out that the bear is trying to steal Finn's identity and in your footsteps. He'll point out that LSP is wearing garbage and gotcha. He'll make fun of Finn's missing sock and Bimo Noir. He'll hold a grudge against the pup gang for throwing a basketball at him and You Made Me. He'll acknowledge that he doesn't really care about beating the farm and who would win. And he'll point out how bad JT Dogzone's advice is in Reign of Gunters. Oh yeah, Season 4 is also the season to introduce JT Dogzone, a former pen name that was used by Jake. We learn that Finn read his book in Reign of Gunters, and we see Ice King pull it off the shelf in I Remember You. I love how it's made super obvious that this is actually Jake, and yet the show itself never actually acknowledges it. But going back to Jake himself, this was a pretty low-key year for him as a whole. With the exception of Card Wars and debatably Princess Cookie, he doesn't really get as many spotlight episodes as he does in seasons 2 and 3, but he still plays a major role in a good majority of episodes. But the same thing cannot be said about Princess Bubblegum. This was a very interesting season for her. The way I see it, Season 4 is really when Princess Bubblegum came into her own, as this is when she fully moved away from just being the cute princess slash love interest of Finn, and grew a much more defined personality. We get to see more of her morally gray side in Princess Cookie and Burning Low. We get Goliad and You Made Me, two episodes showcasing the complicated relationship between her and one of her creations. We see a bit of her experimental side in Five Short Grables and The Lich. And we see her in the role of the protagonist in Lady and Peebles. Seriously, we get so many different looks for PB this season, it's probably her best year as a whole. The show really started getting creative with the ways in which PB influences the plot. They started subverting typical princess tropes more. Her moral ethics were put into question more often. They leaned even more into her sciency angle. Basically, my point in all this is that Peebles is kinda awesome in Season 4, and she's easily the MVP of the season. Season 4 was another pretty solid year for the Ice King. There's not quite as much variety here as in his Season 3 appearances, but the show continued to shift him away from the Saturday morning cartoon villain archetype he was at the beginning. I feel like, more than anything else, Season 4 really focuses on the Ice King's domestic life. What it's like living with all these penguins. What it would be like if the Ice King actually had a wife. What it's like seeing spirits everywhere. 
and seeing how he's looked down upon by other wizards. I think the main point I'm trying to make here is that Season 4 tried to humanize Ice King more. I mean, after that big Simon reveal in Season 3, you can't really go back to him trying to capture a princess every episode. In fact, the only episode in which he does kind of steal princesses is Princess Monster Wife. And even this episode portrays him as a lot more sympathetic than a Season 1 or 2 episode would. But of course, if we're talking sympathetic, this is also the season with I Remember You, easily the hardest hitting episode of the series. Oof, this episode, man. It's rough. But speaking of which, season 4 was a bit of a weird one for Marceline. She only got two major roles this season, a step down from the three she got in seasons 2 and 3. But when one of those episodes is I Remember You, it's kinda hard to call it a bad year for her. Though I guess it doesn't help that she wasn't really herself for most of Daddy's Little Monster. The only real theme I could find with Marceline's appearances this season is the focus on her and her parental figures. We see her relationship with Hunson in Daddy's Little Monster, and we're introduced to her relationship with Simon Petrikov slash the Ice King in I Remember You. And yeah, that's about all I have to say about Marceline this season. With the obvious exception of I Remember You, this was a pretty weak year for her. Kinda weird that they themed this season's DVD after her. Much like with Princess Bubblegum, I really feel like Bimo came into his own this season. They really amped up the cute, childlike nature of Bimo as a character. I mean, this season gave us Bimo Noir, our first of many Bimo-centered episodes that really helped cement who Bimo is as a character. From here on out, he was portrayed less like a robot and more like an imaginative kid. This season also gave us the introduction of Bimo's mirror friend, Football, which helped further this idea that Bimo has a strong imagination. Oh, he's also great in Card Wars. I do not play such games with Jake and Bimo Chop. If this were a real attack, you would be dead. Are two of my all-time favorite Bimo lines. So yeah, this was a pretty solid year for Bimo as a whole. As you can probably tell based on my tone throughout this video, I think Season 4 is another really strong season of Adventure Time. Granted, I don't like it quite as much as Season 3, that season was just so consistently good. 4 just has a few too many episodes I'd rather skip for me to consider it as strong as Season 3. However, I think the best episodes in Season 4 are on par with the best episodes in Season 3. Like, if you asked me to choose between my top 10 list of Season 3 and my top 10 list of Season 4, it'd probably be a really tough call. But hey, we'll save that for next time. Just try and guess what my number 1 will be, I dare you. But how do you all feel about Season 4? Do you think it's one of the best, or do you think the show started going downhill? Let me know in the comments and have a good one. Kirby, out.